My name is Farah. I'm from Wise of Women Organization. You're working here. Yes, I am in my work as a volunteer. Because I want to be a judge, I want to be, uh, I want to make law, especially in Afghanistan. I want to be a president. <laughs> you want to make law so that women become? Uh, become a president. Maybe you become the next okay. president. <laughs> that would be good. And what would you do when you, if and when you become a president? At the first, I want to make a beautiful house for me, <laughs> for me, and then I want to support my family. I bought a beautiful car for me, oh. <laughs> and then I want to just um, make a joke. I want to support my society, um, especially um, uh, fire, um, uh, fire um, I don't know about Say it in Farsi. Uh, um, uh, provinces. Provinces, provinces, yes. And um, I want to make law in Afghanistan. I want to support my um, people. Okay. Thank you. My name is Helen Breeton. I am a program specialist for UNIFEM Afghanistan. I've been here for 15 months. Uh, our main role here as a United Nations agency is to work to build women's leadership in Afghanistan and wherever possible to empower women in the major reform processes that are taking place at this time. What were you thinking about them before you came? And yeah, well to be honest, before I came here I didn't know a lot about Afghanistan other than what I'd seen in the media and read in the paper. And my image then was simply women behind the burqa. And so when I came to Kabul uh, last year I was completely amazed uh, by the strength, as I said, of, of Afghan women. And even though in the streets of Kabul and in other places you may see women behind the burqa, behind it they are strong women, I can tell you, and they'll tell you what's best for their country. And The problem was that each organization which wanted to work on women had no security. There was no guarantee of our work. Our life was in danger. Under those conditions, we had underground schools and many other activities for women. Our organization had mobilized close to 100 women, all of them working on many different programs. We did our work while there was no security. Our lives was in danger. When the Taliban fell and international organizations came to Afghanistan, they completely overlooked our work, and our work was not regarded as having any value. There was no recognition of our very, very hard work. For example, an American woman from an American organization came to Afghanistan to set up a program called Macaroni Soup. This program was to make women to make soup and distribute them. Women were 
being assigned to make soup. This was not what we wanted for our new Afghanistan. This was not our vision of new Afghanistan, to make women just make soup, and we wanted education. We want participation of women in our politics. We want our women to be invited to international summits. Our problem is violence against women, violence in society and violence in the family. We want to change our women's situation in a profound way, not to, just to make soup. Our goal is to educate women. This is indeed a major problem in our country. This is to support children throughout the world. Afghanistan has experienced many years of war. Our children are our future. We want our children to save Afghanistan. We want our children to bring peace. The future is in the hands of our children. We want our country to flourish in peace. It's not only Afghanistan. We have many friends throughout the world. There are many women in other countries who are concerned about peace. They want to advocate and support women's rights. For example, during the Taliban, we could not celebrate 8th of March. We used to listen to 8th of March celebration on the radio and listen to programs and hear our friends mentioning our name. To hear our name on the radio was inspiring and empowering. It reminded us that we are not alone. We envisioned a day that we could also one day celebrate an international day in our own country. One of our program is decommissioning, sponsored by DDR. Our role has been to provide work for the families of the men who have been decommissioned. When men are decommissioned, their families need help. We provide work for men and women in different professions, such as needlework for women and carpentry for men. In my opinion, security is the most important problem throughout the country. Kabul is not Afghanistan. Security and economic problems are our major challenge. Uh, my name is Marzia. My second name is Basel. Now I'm working as a uh, program officer for UNIFEM, as a gender justice program officer. Uh, there should be uh, a strong coordination meeting between national and international organizations because I see some gaps. While I'm in international organization conferences and outside Afghanistan, and very main conferences, usually men uh, and women of the other countries, they're asking many funny questions. For example, they would like to be represent of Afghan women while they have never been in Afghanistan. So I think they should come themselves, for example, more closely work with the Afghan women, more closely work with the civil society, with the public. 
some civil society uh, could hide the reality, but public will give all the truth. So, I mean, uh, they should start a strong relationship, especially understanding of the culture, understanding of the language, understanding of the accent. I don't mean by grammatically, but how they behave, understanding the social situation of Afghanistan, the political and the economical. These all can make the work for the international organizations very easy. Without that, it is not possible. While I see this hasn't been happened very closely, I think not only for the national organizations, but with the governmental organizations, because I think if we want to build Afghanistan for the future, we have to start building a strong government for the future. Civil society is also a, a strong part of the community, but I think we do need a strong government to also civil society will feel comfort and will go together on one way. But if should focus on the main needs that we have, rather than to work for the fancy things, for the building of making furniture, making buildings. You can see just right now lots of fancy cars which are, which are very, very expensive. It never, uh, it never, I mean, uh, solve the problem of Afghan. While we have 62,000 children on the street, thousands, more than 100, or more than 400, what I had the, the data, the, the number, uh, women videos. Most of the women are begging on the street. Why we do not focus more on that to start helping the women from the Rus Grad society? While we are thinking for the fancy thing to, to work, I, I mean in the high levels, which I think uh, it shouldn't be, because we do need some urgent help to be done, rather than to, to, be, to work suddenly in a high level. I think this is, uh, in my view, we have to find out what are the necessity, urgent necessity of Afghanistan, because still I, I feel Afghanistan an emergency. While they say Afghanistan has passed the emergency, if we had passed the emergency, how can we have 62,000 children on the streets? Kabul. How can we have, yeah, just in Kabul, just in Kabul. If you go out, you can find out lots of children begging. And I just, the day before yesterday, I was crossing a street with my car at small by who is begging on the street, he, in front of me, fall down, because he was too weak to do this event, and suddenly a car was to hit him. You see, no cure, no assistance for them. What, what does international organizations? We have lots of women, children, organizations, but I think few, but good work we do need. If you go, we can see in each street, any, any topic, any title, with this, with that, with that. Sorry to telling that while I'm working as an international organization, so I mean, for UNIFAM, UN is matter is another thing, because I think give food for their belly, because they're hungry. They, they need some food, and then they need education. I mean, people do not think, they, they just think fancy things. Planning, planning, planning. But in 2006, I think no international community will help Afghanistan, because they say you passed the emergency. But what has been done, let's think of that, which we will be at the zero stage. The aim of international organization here is to improve conditions in Afghanistan. But there are some problems. For example, international staff are paid a high salary. While it is us, Afghans, who do all the work, we do the grand work. We are the ones who go to provinces, but they are the ones who get the high salary. These high salaries should go to programs that help the country. There must be good coordinations between national and international organizations. We need to coordinate better because there are some misunderstandings. For example, some local aid workers are not happy. They say, we are the ones who are doing the work. We are paid very little. I have mentioned this in my previous interviews, that we have Afghan aid workers, and it is better to hire them. It is best to give Afghan women more chances when they have the skills and experience. It's important that Afghan aid workers address Afghan problems because they have the experience and know-hows and, and their cost is lower. My NGO, for instance, worked during the Taliban with no international fund, but our solidarity and consensus was very critical to our work and helped us to get a lot of work done. <laughs> Yeah, 
My name is Jamal. I'm currently program officer for UN Research Fund for Afghan Women. Before my current position, I was working with International Canada Fund. During that time, I was working in remote areas where the Taliban was very influential. We had different programs for women in those areas. During those days, many women left Afghanistan for Iran and Pakistan, were able to receive high education. These women acquired a great deal of skill and knowledge. But unfortunately, international organizations tend to formulate their own program and bring it to us. Sometimes what international organizations have in their mind is not compatible with the way our people feel and think. This creates problems. How would you assess the impact of UN? I'd say it's mixed. Uh, on the one hand, we have just outstanding women to work with, extremely passionate, extremely strong and talented. Uh, some have returned from Pakistan or other places, but some have been here right throughout the Taliban time. And so there's, there's so much passion and strength to work with, which makes it easy in some sense and enjoyable. So there's a lot to work with, and we're seeing more and more women uh, rising to the occasion, seizing opportunities, and showing potential as, as the women leaders of this country. We saw that last year with the constitutional lawyer Joga where 100 of the 500 delegates were women, which is outstanding. More women than I would say you'd get in, even in my own country where you know, women in power are a minority. This is the first women's radio in Afghanistan. This radio is entirely staffed by women. They do all the technical work, broadcasting, writing, producing, reporting. I feel extremely proud that we have been able to succeed in media and journalism in the aftermath of the fall of the Taliban. We have succeeded to carry our role as the first women's only media. For this, we are indebted to all Afghan women. We have been able to show not only to our own people, but to the international community that when Afghan women are given a chance, they have their own talent and strength. Now that we have a woman's radio, we are aiming for a woman television. But we hope to have help from our international friends and supporters. We do the work, but we need assistance from our friends and supporters. When we attend international summits, people are surprised to see us, to see Afghan women who can participate in these events. I was invited to a leadership conference in the U.S. While I was there, I noticed that whenever they show Afghanistan, they only show very poor parts of the country. They rarely, if ever, show how many women, educated women, are working to improve conditions in the country. I went to a, a meeting at the Ministry of Women's Affairs quite, uh, I'd only been here I think maybe a week, and we were asked to stand up and introduce ourselves and to say a little bit about who we were. And I just stood up and said uh, that I'd just arrived from Australia and I was happy to be here because women were so much stronger than I had imagined because of what I'd seen in media stories in, in Australia. And everyone was clapping and they were so happy to, to hear that because they know it's not true. And I think it's very frustrating for them knowing that the rest of the world perceives them as being weak and repressed because clearly this is not the case. Unfortunately, those who come from abroad to Afghanistan tell us that we can't believe that Afghan women work outside home or Afghan women don't wear the burqa. They have no idea that we have many women who work in different professions, in women's only radio, or work in different ministries. It is very interesting for them to see us here. It's a shame that our real image is not reflected outside of our country. Our international image is far from reality. People outside of Afghanistan have very negative image of us. They have little information about how we participate in our society. 
Here I want to ask those who come to report on Afghan women. I want to ask them to show our reality, to show a new image of Afghan women to the international community. We want people outside Afghanistan to know about us and how we participate in our society. Afghan women have been resilient. They have been fighting for their rights, if not with guns, with their pens. Struggle with a pen is stronger than with a gun. A struggle does not have to be an armed struggle. We want our international friends to come and see how we fight for our rights. We want our friends not only to capture our problems, but also how we fight them. Often images of Afghan women outside of the country create false images. Do you work without burqa? They can't believe that we work side by side with our men. You can see here that there are only five of us. With five people, we ran an entire radio. A few months ago, a foreign reporter came to see us. She was absolutely amazed and couldn't believe the kind of work that we do with only five women. They would need at least 20 people to do what we do with five persons, even though they have more equipment than we do. I see the future in Afghanistan very bright, but this is up to the Afghans and up to Afghan women. They must take charge of the future of the country. Our future depends on how much effort we put in reconstructing our country.